you ready for the day? Ready for the day. A day with cuts. You already know, man. Oh, yeah. While we on our way, we might as well just chop it up a little bit. We'll talk about the album, the Shakur album. Yeah, hell yeah. It's I'm super, super hyped that that drop because it should have been waiting. I've been waiting for like three years to drop that. Three? You had the project for three years? Yeah, just sitting. A lot of them songs old. A lot of people don't even know. A lot of them songs old as fuck. Yeah. So what's the uh, what's the situation with you and the label? I know me and you, we got our you know right. our own personal relationship. We spoke before, so tell everybody like what's going on with you and uh, with E One, right? right? Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so I, I signed basically um, with E One in like 2016, and then um, basically I signed for an album that was already done. A lot of people don't know this, so this is why I kind of really like slowed the process up too. I signed for an album that was just already done. But me being me, I'm like, man, I can make a better album. That's going to be my first album. I can make a better one. So I, I dropped all those songs for free. And that's where I went wrong at because the, the album they signed me for, I dropped for free. So when they gave me the money, that was really to pay for the album. I didn't even know how the business worked for real, for real. That was really to pay for the album. So I blew through that money and was like, man, I'm going to give them another album. And I'm still putting stuff out. So when it was time to be like, yo, I need an album budget. It was like, but you dropped the album and we gave you the money. You feel me? So... It was kind of confusing. You, got, you had to pay them back for right. what they gave you. Right, exactly. So mm. um, I just had to figure that all of that out. And that was, took like three years because I had to let go of management. I had to do uh, let figure out attorneys, figure out everything for real, for real. Mm. So now so now you're in a space where you, you're off the label now. Right. right you're off the label. So what's what's next for you? Um, I feel like what's next is... Uh, I feel like now I'm going to just be able to capitalize off the features and just my own music that I just want to see. Like, I feel like how I should have did it before the label, I get a chance to do it now, if you get what I'm saying. Like, right. just as far as just streaming and just myself, and it's just coming via 7947, and I get to see how, how the streaming work and just how much they paying out, and just I can experience that and not really go off of, you know, what people saying out here. So I'm quite sure you had a conflict with the label way before you dropped Shakur. Right. So, what, if the album was done three years ago, what was the hold up? Like, why did they, why did you not put it out if you were trying to get out of that deal three years ago? Um, because I just felt like I also just didn't really, really, really know, like, like, that it would, de all right, so, when I basically said, all right, forget the um the album that was already done that I signed for, right. I didn't know that the process was going to take long to hand in another album. I thought that they would just, you know, give me the money to turn in a new album and, you know, we just go from there. I didn't know that all this stuff get drags out. You right. feel me? And then it was part of my fault as well because I ain't really have a proper team for real, for real. Like, my team wasn't, like, solid. Like, they wasn't coming through, like, hitting where they were supposed to really be hitting. So that just really fucked me up for real for real like a lot because my team wasn't really solid so when i'm hitting people like yo um i need to uh we gotta figure something out they hitting the people the people not really even taking them serious you feel me like it's like man, whatever like so they not really putting no dents in the walls and nothing you feel me so that's where i really kind of got fucked up at because i really like team was just messed up and i was going up there yelling at the label i was you feel me arguing i was a meetings arguing i was just doing a bunch of extra shit that a lot of people ain't even know you feel right. me like oh make sure you just see oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. hell yeah <laughs> but you feel me i was just doing a lot of shit that a lot of people ain't even know like and it was just stressful for real for real because i was playing so many positions like i'm not a manager but i had a notebook and all of that i was literally going in there with my notebook look this is my plan this is what i'm doing da -da 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 -da. you feel me like I, I was stuck like on that like yo i gotta figure this shit out because my name the only name that's really on there you feel right, what i'm saying right. so on the contract so i'm like i gotta figure this shit out and everybody else was giving me nonchalant vibes i'm like i can't deal with that i can't i can't rock like that you had to kind of figure everything right, out right yeah hell yeah so knowing what you know now like I know, I, I feel like a lot of artists, especially if they don't know the ins and outs of the industry, they only know what the perception is. They love to jump into contract. They love to get record record deal. They feel like once they got a record deal, they made it. Right, right, right. So knowing what you know now and the the struggles that you went through, and I and I know with E1, the um the team changed a few yeah, times. Yeah, hell yeah. So I know sometimes that can impact the artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, knowing what you know now, would you have signed? Or would you have been independent throughout um, this whole time? 
I would have still signed. And I, I, that, it took a lot for me to just say that because I just feel like like um, time made me be able to say that. But I would have still signed just based off of like um, I took even when like we was talking recently this a minute ago. Yeah. You were saying like the, sometimes the best experience is just the life experience, like right, just right, going right. through it. So mm -hmm. I just feel like that's really the, the what I really bought. I bought the experience. I bought the lesson. Like all the pain I went through, all of that. That was just all part of the lesson. You feel me? Like I had to go through it. And I thought about it. Like I'd rather go through it now than me be thirty trying to figure out. Damn, I'm thirty years old trying to get out of a deal. Like you feel me? Yeah. I rather just be trying to do it now than be trying to get it out when I'm 40 or 50 whatever year you feel me trying to get out so I'd rather learn it now while I'm 25 than to learn it just on another scale or another tip that's a good way of looking at it like you said I'm like I'm a big advocate of that like I always say and somebody told me this a long time ago I said experience is the best teacher right. you know what I mean you got to go through it to know you know what you know now right, right, right. you know what I mean that's and, true even, I mean, me personally speaking, some of the things that I've been through, um, whether they were good or bad, I value all of those experiences right. because, I'm, you know, it helps you grow. It helps you grow. And luckily for you, you just had one album. Right. It could have been five. Yeah. Right. I know I know artists that are stuck in like six album deals and five album deals and they, they aren't happy to trying to get out of it. So luckily for you, it was one. So... Um, now that Shakur is out, I'm sure the labels, you know, they're going to do what they got to do to push right. it. Um, would you be looking forward to getting into another deal or you feel like this is it? You want to take a break? Um, I'm going to take a break just for a few months, but I do feel like if it, like, I know, like, all deals ain't bad. You know what I mean? It's just, I just got to get the team right first just so we able to, like, you know, just execute how we supposed to execute while having a deal because, like, if you don't got the right team, you just sitting for real for on a yeah. label. Like, if you don't got the right team pushing and, you feel me, just going, like, it's supposed to be a partnership. So, right. I used to think, like, you sign to a label, they're going to do everything and your management. And then he just, you feel me, he just with you day to day. And I really didn't know, you feel me? So, I feel like the experience, I just bought the lesson for real for real. So, to answer your question, like, I would sign just probably, maybe like, um, I'll say probably, I want to give myself at least like a year to just mm -hmm. figure out like you feel me right. myself and just put things out through me and then um i definitely would be opening up to just you know figure out like if i want to sign again another situation yeah yeah um going back on the team thing because a lot of things in and us speaking like this can help a, you know an upcoming artist that right. might not know you know how to go about things they might got good music but speaking of teams, teams are so important, especially for an artist who is just trying to get in the game. I always tell people about managers. Like, artists hit me up all day. I need a manager. And I, right. and I feel like once they feel like they got that one song, they're like, yo, I need to hurry up and get a manager. But it's all about picking the right manager because that right manager or that right agent or that right attorney is kind of got your life in their hands, yeah, right, especially when sure. they when it's when it comes down to getting deals and and signing. So, um, if you know of an artist and you met them and you were speaking to them, what advice would you give them? Um, as far as picking teams. Right, right, right. Okay, because uh, I would just tell them just to wait, just to start so and wait on the management too. That's what I mean too, because. But I, I do kind of feel bad because, like, I did see an artist recently, and I told him, like, don't never sign, bro. <laughs> like, you feel me? But that was the emotional that thing. You feel me? That, yeah, yeah, I was just me coming out, just having to talk with him. And we was in the studio, and I'm like, don't ever sign, bro. You could do this yourself, da 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 da, da. And, like, I, to think about it now, I feel like I did kind of draw because I shouldn't be telling nobody not to ever sign. Like, who the fuck am I? To be telling somebody don't ever sign because well, you speaking from personal experience. Yeah, right, but I'm just saying everybody contract could be different. So he, he might not have the same E1, you know what I mean? But I was speaking off of my situation. I just didn't want nobody to go through that. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm like, damn, I feel so bad. But I would just tell him like a lot of stuff you can already do on your own is already gonna come. So and I just know that's just off of a lot of stuff, like just off of previous managers I was dealing with, just for example, stuff might be just coming to your email and you forward it to a guy and just be like yo all right you know check this out for me and it already came to your email he's getting 20 percent for something that would already came to your email yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like somebody's hitting you up yo da, 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 regardless of who it is hitting you up y'all want to do this and you like well, damn i don't want to talk to him and you send it to them they only going to do what you was going to do you feel me and a lot of times i learned like 
I could finesse better than the managers. You feel yeah. me? Because they don't. Sometimes people just a, a bite just on the fact that you on the phone. If you get what I'm saying, they just bite on the fact like, yo, you on the phone? That's you. Facetime me right now. All right, done. Yeah. The money deposit sent. Like that was you. Right? I I won't cut you. I don't want to cut you off. Right. But I'm kind of cutting you off. <laughs> I'm the same way, and I know right. we spoke about this before. Like as far as managers, like I don't have a manager. I don't got an agent. Right. Um, I've had, I don't have a publicist, a PR. I had all of those before. But what I've learned, and it, it, and you know, different situations is, you know, you, you get different outcomes. But what I've learned is exactly what you said. It's right. so much more easier. Like, um, they talking directly to you. Mm-hmm. Um, now when it comes down, I'm a DJ, so I'm different from artists. As an artist, I don't always feel like that's the right way to go about things. It's in the beginning, right. it's cool, but once you start to really gain momentum and you really moving out here, you want to need help. You right, know what I'm true. saying? But to to double back off of what you were saying, you absolutely right. right. Like if somebody if a, if a, a, a promoter calls core right now and says, "Yo, I want to book you for something," and you like, "Yo, it's me." You just, you know, we can set it up. It's done. Right. He gonna send it to you ASAP. Yeah, right. He gonna be us around with the manager. With the manager, he's gonna be numbers going back and forth, just all type of stuff. So like. I guess to clear to clarify what I guess me and you are saying is, you gotta deal with it on a case by case basis because right. your situation might be different from our situation. Yeah, right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Hell but yeah. does does a hundred percent fact right there like? Yeah, sometimes people love to deal directly with the person, but also you got to be careful because a lot, you know, being an artist or being a musician or being a creative um, in itself, you kind of sometimes people can get over on you because you're so passionate about the craft, the craft that you forget the about no, the music and the though. business side of things. So, I mean, it can go any way. Yeah, no, it can go. It, that, sometimes it go that way, and then sometimes you just don't got a buffer. So sometimes you catch yourself yelling at motherfuckers, and you're like, damn, I'm the artist that was drawn. I can't. Right. You feel me? And then sometimes if it was the manager, then you would still be in, you know, good grace based off of they, they made it the manager, not you. So, mm-hmm. you know, everything would still work out, but when you you on the phone and you dealing with features and you kind of you could catch on the bullshit a little bit faster than prior to manager you like no this one's some bullshit and he might not really be he might just be stuck on the fan tip and i had caught myself even snapping so this from perfect personal experience i caught myself just even snapping on people that was hitting me up i'm like i can't do that like i can't it's not gonna work like Right. People got my number. I'm yelling at them on the phone. It's just they're yelling at me. It's like it's just this shit not gonna work. Everybody not, just making a yeah. mess. <laughs> <laughs> right, like everybody just going everywhere. Like right, right, left, right, left. So, so um, so you got you got the album out right now. Um, we spoke about. I don't even know if we if we um, talked about this on the public platform or not, but we talked about reinventing yourself. Do you right. feel like? Um, the next album will be you reinventing yourself. I feel like me talking to you now, I knew you for, for years now, but um, you know, you just got it out of the label situation. I feel like you've grown, you, you're a new person now. Do you feel like the next album you want to reinvent yourself or you feel like you're going to keep going with the, the way you've been doing? Um, no, I definitely feel like this next album I'm going to come all the way with me. Like, And that's what I feel like. Not that the label is even like holding me back from a creative standpoint but mentally the stuff that was going on was draining so i wasn't really mm-hmm. able to focus on me and get me right you feel me so right. i feel like now this is like a like weight off my shoulder where i could really focus on me and say all right this is how i want to come in this is how i want to do this this is how i want to do that all right i'm gonna do it like this i'm gonna do it like that and i get to kind of pick everything like not that the label was picking everything but i had to still somewhat meet them in the middle this right. is just all me and my peoples now like or just me if you whatever mm-hmm disco around it's just me you feel me strictly me i get to pick the records i get to do it i get to pick out how i want to come out how i want to look how i want to sound just all of that now um going back on on the music one of your favorite one of my favorite songs i got two favorite songs right up top and i'm a star right is it was called i'm a star star, those are my two top favorite core records um i'm a star when you did that record, I felt, and even on your on a new album, Shakur, you did a lot of uh, you did a different a lot of different flows. Now with the I'm a Star, that flow was crazy. That was out of the norm of a core right, record. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Do you see yourself doing more records like that? Yeah, hell yeah, for sure, for sure. And that was just like on some experiment shit. You mm-hmm. feel me? So, I could tell. Yeah, hell yeah. So 
I definitely feel like I, um, I'm just still experimenting day to day, but I feel like I'm in a better space now because I feel like I'm free. Mm-hmm. Like I'm let go of this situ- shit that I was held in, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I feel like, and I made I'm a star when my mind was clear and I wasn't, you feel me, even in those label situations. So I know for a fact I'm going to be able to. It's creative. Yeah, hell yeah, Maybe. come back. Mm-hmm. You just did Made in America. Yeah, hell yeah, that was super, super, super good. Talk about, let me, we first of all, let me disclaim, we're Philadelphia, Philly. Come on, we got to get together with these potholes. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> damn. I can't even drive straight. I'm over here like this. About to fall into hell and everything else. But anyway, talk about Made in America. Right. You just did Made in America. Um, Yeah, hell yeah, that was a blessing. The stage yeah. was super, super, super lit. So, um, I feel like, uh. I remember, like, 2017, I had regular tickets, me, Lil, we, the crazy part is, we was, me, Lil, Tierra Whack, we was just all under this tent, just watching and just talking about, you know, how it would be when we get our shot, you feel me, up there, or whatever, mm-hmm. this was, like, 2017, I remember 2018, I'm talking about maybe, like, two or three days, right before me in America, it was like, ah, we got this spot for you, it was on the skate stage, I ain't give a fuck what stage it was on, I just knew, it's made in America. Let's do it. You feel me? Right. Like I don't care what stage it was on. So I was just thankful. Like man, it's made in America. Let's rock. Let's do it. So um, I knocked that out, and then next year, I mean the next year after that, I dropped my album, and then it just it was there. yeah, I was there. And then I hope that the, the stage get higher, or I'm at the same stage next year. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because the stage was at this year. That was a that was a pretty big yeah, stage. Yeah, that was it wasn't. Pretty, yeah, that it was wasn't a young bull yeah. stage. <laughs> I was like, shit, though. Dang, and the set what the set time wasn't even like something I was used to because I had 45 minutes, but I'm used to doing 30. Yeah. So it was like, darn, that extra 15 minutes means something. Like that's like that means something up there. Yeah, because um, when when you first start, when you first starting off, and I'm not saying you first starting off, you you um, you a vet in the city. You know what I'm saying? Because you got that. a lot of projects and you've done a lot, but they still doing 15 minutes. Right. No, for sure though. You were saying that. What was like? What was the your top? Of the top favorites of your set, you know, what was everybody rocking with uh, in your 45 minute set? <laughs> uh, stuck in my ways, yeah, of course, up top. Um, crack, I was trying to push like some of the records I did, like the new records that's off the album. I was trying to push that in, mm-hmm. you know, just in the whole while I was on stage. I just wanted them to get familiar with those records so they just like on it, you feel me, for sure. Yeah, and your, your audience changed too, yeah, no, like crazy though, because I remember it was just strictly. You feel me? One crowd. It and was us. It, yeah, it was us. Then, it, <laughs> then, it, then it's like, yo, this shit look like a fucking college festival or some shit. Like, yeah. You feel me? So, and they knew it, like, word for word. Like, I'm like, damn, that's crazy right there. Like, You ever crowd surf before? It's yo, time. You, it's you, time. Yeah, 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 your audience is right. changing. They no, going to sure, hold though. you down. You they, know what I'm saying? They going to hold you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You jump on right. us. We like, oh, let's go and no, draw it. Yeah, he drawing, right. <laughs> No, I noticed that though, cause it's like <laughs> with like our crowd, like not to make it a race thing, but I just noticed course, like never. you feel me, like mm-hmm. our crowd don't like the water getting thrown on them. No, but I know like it's certain people that's like ah, that was crazy. Ah, you get you the one, me? you get the one wrong girl in the front, you throw yeah, water on her over. at the front, yeah, she gonna so, see you yeah, backstage. It's over after right. that. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> So you said you gonna start getting into all yeah, of that. Yeah, I'm gonna start getting into all of that. Like, mm-hmm. you feel me? I feel like I'm gonna be more free and just be more. You feel me? Just into it a little bit more. I feel like. Just this whole label thing. I hate to put it on that, but that shit really took a toll on me. Just yeah. from just, just you wake up every day thinking about that, like nothing. Like I'm talking about nothing. You don't think about shit else, food, nothing. Like you catch yourself getting skinny, all type of shit. You just be stressing. Like you just yeah. thinking about that. Like you feel me? Nothing else. You just thinking about that for real, for real. So I feel like now the weight off my shoulder, I could kind of see it clear. You feel me? Like I actually see it. Like life clear. Like damn, all right, this is what it is. I got a fresh start. It, I, I'm sort of walking on eggshells, but it's like. I don't really want to. I just know everything is going to happen how it's supposed to happen. You feel me? I right. just don't want to make the same dumbass mistakes I made. Six over yeah. and over. Yeah. And then speaking of speaking of that, I know mentally being stuck in a situation can really it can really harm you. It can really hurt right. you. It hurts your creativity. Is what I'm trying to say. I mean, we've all been in situations. Once you in the game for a while, you get in situations where you like, oh, I'm I'm stuck. How do I get? out of this and right. it not only messes with your music it messes with your creativity you can you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again because you kind of tr- you try to get out you try to figure out how to get out of that hole right. you know what i'm saying and a lot of new artists may not understand that you know what i mean they don't they don't get it they just want that taste of they want that deal they want that little taste of fame but it's another side that comes with it 
and it's the mental side where right. you can be stuck in one wrong situation and everything mm -hmm. is just you shut completely down. Right, that's yeah. true. But we gonna let loose today. No, you know hell what I mean? Yeah, for sure. We're gonna do something different with you today.